to the late apex uh we are joined by a different co-presenter here co-presenter yeah i like it i'll, I'll work with that That's, yes i think it's a demotion though technically yeah Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're new to the series, um, this is just where we talk about everything sim racing on the week. Uh, we cover everything we can, and then we close with just everything that's been happening here at Apex with our uh, Apex Racing Academy, Apex Racing Team, Apex Racing TV, and all the other AR acronyms that I'm probably still learning, and simulators where you can buy all your gear. Thank you. Yeah. See, I remembered most of them. I was going to say, you did good there. So <laughs> Thank you. You're under a bit of pressure tonight, right? <laughs> yeah, like, say, you know, there's no more Sam here. It's yeah. like, yeah, you need to need to make sure that you mention all the Apex things that uh, yes. I've come up with over the over the years. So. Well, I definitely used most of them uh, myself. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I used all of them, I think, oh, on yeah. the way up. But yeah, hello everybody. Um, good to be here. Like I say, filling in um, Sam's shoes while he's away on holiday. I think he's just with uh, family for uh, for a few days, so he'll be back um, next week, so you won't have to put up with me um, too much. Uh, yeah, so hopefully I don't make a mess of his show. Um, I already trashed one of his broadcasts, so... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard from him, but yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'll get it in nice and early. We're going to continue in the same vein that we did on the last one, which is, just so he doesn't shout at us that much, we would like more likes this week than we can get um so yeah um please smash that like button <laughs> so we don't get moaned at yeah. when he when he returns i mean so looks like we got a thomas in chat already given us a like and deville unexpected appearance what do you do well alex alex runs all of the ar acronyms is that the best term i could use yeah the boss man oh uh, that's yeah hello lisa so, the boss man I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't run them anymore. I think that's fair to say. I think I, we've we've got to the point now where we've got a good team of people yep. that specialize in different areas of the business, um, and I just try and help out wherever I can. Um, like today, someone's away on holiday, and um, I don't mind shoving a headset on and being in front of camera. Um, I mean, I think it's fair to say. So, I've done everything. Um, you know, I've done a bit of broadcasting, uh, maybe, no, it's probably the first time I've done a podcast, but, um, yeah, done a bit of league admin, done a bit of racing, done a bit of coaching, set up development work. I've, this year I've been doing a lot of sim hire, being the only one old enough to have a license yep. to drive a van in <clears throat> the middle of London. Not that you need to be older to be, to be in the middle of London, but just, you know. <laughs> Just, yeah, they're all kids and they're like, oh, yeah, got a license. Oh, no, you're under 25, get lost. You're not allowed to drive a van. So maybe in the old get, I have to drive drive the van. So I've been doing a lot of that, a lot of building rigs. Everything but driving. No driving this year, I suppose. VCO was, oh, was VCO. That was next. That was last year. Yeah, it was last well, Time yeah. flies. I know, that's crazy. So, um, Hello, yes. Mark in chat. It's no, November. I know who he is. Oh, you're asking who I am? Are you asking who I am? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Well, you're, so you're the famous one. I'm your, I'm the co Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. See. Sam's gone and I'm still co-presenter. Um, right, um, I think it's the title, but the first order of subject is the GT World Finals. Now, I'm not a big Gran Turismo uh, fan myself. I think we have at least no. one in chat who is. You never did Gran Turismo? I did it. Um, I was more of a uh, Xbox user, so I come from the Forza line. <laughs> So, I, <laughs> like what I've got to work with here. I have a PlayStation now. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> so, so I mean, just 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 for the uninitiated as well, like where we start. Like, I feel like this podcast might go on a long time, just because I like to I like to fill with crap yeah, and stories. Perfect. I'm afraid. So, um, so for for anyone who knows me really well, obviously you'll know that I started racing um, like F1 2010. Like that's where my sim racing gig started. You can say career. Yeah. Well, it was career, I suppose. Yep. Um, and that was on the PlayStation. Um, obviously, I'd done Gran Turismo and things like that. Yeah, for, like from PlayStation 2. And I don't remember if I had it on the PS1. Maybe I did. I think I probably did. But yeah, so it was always a um, PlayStation guy through and through. Um, yeah, I can't remember. I think there was like 12, 15 leagues on PS2, P uh, PS3. Oh, oh god, I can't remember. It's been too long. Um, yeah, so 
I used to hate the Xbox League over at ARL side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I loved oh. the first couple of Grand Tours. I, I, I did. I played them a lot. Um, just yeah, as a just the older part of me say Grand Tours my four onwards, and especially the later last two. Um, not really at all, unfortunately. But obviously, it's huge in the world of sim racing, right? I mean, uh, I mean, huge. the the thing about GT, right? It's just it looks amazing. Yep, just so good. Like even from you know the very first Gran Turismo and then the second one come out and just like oh my god they always push the boundaries so much on um on, on uh yeah even yeah, the, sort of the how they show the cars off in the interior yeah. and you can pan around the interiors it looks fantastic yeah um no um what was i gonna but say? yeah so what so so what's the dig uh, what's the gig so yeah the t- world finals 2023 tickets are available it's in spain i believe uh let me check my notes oh i mean uh no i'm not in spain at that point but i am in spain soon i don't see it now on my notes but i'm sure i read it's in spain uh, barcelona, barcelona. Yeah. That's in Spain, right? First to the third. <laughs> yes. I nailed it. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be geography lessons tonight. So. Um, yeah, first uh, to third of December um, this year. Obviously, um, yeah, tickets range from 15 euros for a single day pass to 50 euros for the platinum tickets. Obviously, um, there are some details that i'm sure we can um share in terms of web links where you can kind of have a look out but yeah i think um knowing sony um and um was it polythony however you pronounce them yeah (laughs) um it'll be uh it'll be a good crack for actually all the spectators and everyone else that's um that's there so i believe um, um anyone can work their way up to take part i believe I'm not sure if that phase is still open or closed, but I think yeah. that's the appealing thing with things like this, right? With the console accessibility, you, I mean, you're kidding yourself if you really do think you're just going to buy the game and turn up at the World Finals. But <clears throat> well, this was a bit like the the GT Academy and all that sort of stuff back in the day, right? Just, anyone could, yeah, could do it and go for it. Is that little trailer? Are we able to share that on screen? Do yeah, we think? I, I can load it. Maybe. I'm just trying to remember the way around the volumes because Sam's usually here. I don't want to deafen anyone, but I think Lee told me hundred percent. So, Bam. okay, like, let's 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 We've let's got go this. For, what was going go wrong? For it. So, <laughs> headphone users beware. <laughs> I think we're good. Here we go, chat. Obviously, we can't hear it though, <laughs> and it won't play full screen. One second. Oh, what? Yeah, sort of some embedded YouTube thing. One second. We now we might get an ad. Uh, ad blocker. <laughs> It's <laughs> probably going to nail us right now. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> right. Hopefully you guys can hear it. We do run that little hypercar thing down there, load. Yeah. I mean, the visuals are gorgeous. I mean, the eSport activity they have is amazing. The player base is huge. Oh, I'm sweating. Go short but sweet, but high production value. There we go. Yeah, I think um, anyone who hasn't been to like a a sim racing LAN event or something like that, especially if you live fairly local, if you're in Spain, like or or you're having a holiday there, like it'd be worth um, worth having a look. Like I've been to a few sim racing LAN events now and you I know it's the one uh, that was obviously uh they're good they're good fun <coughs> i went to uh munich with you guys that was phenomenal the yeah. atmosphere was phenomenal. i was about to say I, I honestly i think that is the best LAN event that i've been to for atmosphere that final yeah the fi- how the finals work with the activation and you have to win oh my god yeah. i mean I mean, I know it was good because there was eSport drivers like Kev next to me who were watching and he was standing up on his seat and you could see he was leaning forward, how exciting it was. Um, I mean, funnily enough, one of the other ones that I've been to that's been quite good as well, um, I think it was maybe not the first, maybe it was the second or third Sim Racing Expo um, when um, I think it was Race Room to start off with. That right. That they did all the competitions on. And there was no iRacing. I think it was the first year iRacing had been used for the competition. Uh, it wasn't. It was still when it was at the Nurburgring. Oh, okay. It yeah, wasn't yeah. in the arena. It was the year before that when it was still on the stage outside. And again, 
that had some amazing atmosphere, like really, yeah. like all the big teams were there, like some really great close racing. Yeah, it was really good. So. Uh, chat and comment. Uh, Grand Tours have really just really nailed everything, even the game, uh, even beyond the game itself. It's just been incredible. Yeah, it has. People yeah. obviously, a lot of the time, especially PC users, underestimate how big that is. Because obviously, we, as PC Master Race, we forget that yeah. console is still the biggest. Uh, oh, yeah. Way bigger. Unlike F1. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like I so I come from F1. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I used to have a YouTube channel. That used to do twenty five, thirty five thousand views, like back in two thousand and ten, two thousand eleven, per video, and wow. all, and that was. I think I remember you telling me that was almost how it all started. How yeah, ARTV yeah, started. Exactly. So that was just my PlayStation with a what is it like the Hopage or the Hopag or however you pronounced it, the big massive box that you had to put the RCA cables yeah, in yeah, yeah, to, and capture, to your, capture it. your gameplay, um, like that. So yeah, started off with just me doing mine, and then. Um, my mate Woody at the time that we were like teammates, like he got one. So then we mixed the two bits of footage. So he had to clap cheers, send it to me via Dropbox, I think it was. And then I had to edit it together. And so then we kind of, yeah, that uploaded kind of got kind of cool. Um, and then half the league got them. And then, so they all sent me the footage. So then I edited it all together for a race and then put it up there. And then we're like, oh, there's commentate on it. And yeah. <laughs> so I, we did, so I edited it all together, sent the video to everyone. We all watched it while commentating. It took us nine hours, the first one, to commentate on it because we were just rubbish. and <laughs> Just laughing and messing around. And, uh, yeah, but that's kind of where all that... That's amazing. ...that started from, so, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Do you miss the days where it took uh, six hours to download a file and 12 hours to upload? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now you have to do the work right away. Yeah. I've sent you the file. It's like, yeah. oh, damn, I've already got it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have mean, to work. It's, it's pretty crazy that we're doing this right now. Correct, yeah. In sat here. Correct. And that's where it all started, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah no, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. On the subject of Gran Turismo, this is a bit of a wow. I'm going to go straight to a screen share rather than talk about it. I will talk about it, but straight to a screen share just because this... Now, I believe they've done this before, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me just go straight to a picture. Hold on. Bear with me. I'm going to go straight to this. Bam. Uh, this is the Gran Turismo Nissan collaboration dash. Now, they had this in the... This is off notes now. Um, what was it? The Nismo GTR car? It had the PlayStation, like... I remember it had, like, the... Almost a PlayStation Gran Turismo-inspired speedometer and all that. It looked like you was in the game on the car. But, yeah, this is... Um, see my blank look, because I don't know if <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. Uh, the Sorry. Nissan... G uh, I'll Google it. Nissan GTR. I mean, it really wouldn't surprise me. I feel like Nissan and... Um, uh, yeah, and Gran Turismo did an awful lot together, actually. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think it was the GTR. Uh, but anyway, staying on subject, this was unveiled at the... Let me get the word. The... Japan Mobility Show. And yeah, it's a uh, dash that is actually put in the concept car. Um, they're called the Nissan Hyperforce dash. And I think it looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I think once your wife sits in the car and she's almost like, what have you bought? What? Why am I sat in a PlayStation controller? Um, but it looks cool. Well, it, did, I, did I hear you earlier on say, hello, Lisa? Like, come on. Correct, yes. So, what, <laughs> give us your honest opinion, Lisa. What would you think? David comes home in this. <laughs> Wait. Um, what are you going to say? <laughs> I might have a video. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, okay. Now, I've, I've shown a picture when I have a video. Here we go. One second. This sh should work. Hopefully you don't go deaf. Wow. Not sure I could get in. Look at that. <laughs> that is a bit crazy. I don't know about that steering wheel though. Mm. Maybe a bit too far. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
don't get pressed on the wrong button. It's not helping. At all. Nah, it's all good. So, <laughs> no, yeah, that's cool. Uh, we don't have much details. I, don't, I just wanted to show it off because um, it's impressive. The merge in the world of our games and our IRL cars. I think that's a trend we're going to see. It's actually a trend. I always look at Formula One, uh, changing the subject a little bit here, and how we haven't seen a bigger impact on the brand, like Red Bull. Well, I mean, how a car... I know Ford have got this part. I mean, I don't read much into it, to be honest. I bet I, Ford, I, Red Bull are overselling it. I, it's just money. It, it, it's just a sponsorship. <clears throat> They're selling back the batteries. But why haven't we seen a car company be interested in the Red Bull brand to put, like, a special edition... Um, any car, doesn't matter what you pick, a Jaguar, the Red Bull edition. You know, a bit yeah. hint of delivery, uh, some inspiration on the inside with colours and the seats, especially, like an F1. I mean, people would... I would. I'm sure they would. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So this is good to see. Um, I mean, I was think there's... Um, I guess there's a couple of little points I was going to bring up about sort of Gran Turismo, but then this is, is specifically... <clears throat> I think we've got um, a limited time where we can do something like this with the dash and things like that. Because this is... Although it looks pretty cool, it, it's still a traditional car layout, the steering wheel, pedals passenger dash kind of thing um i i am of a firm believer that in 10 years tesla's going to crack the self driving cars e yes i agree and um the 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 interior is not going to look like this when do you think the laws will allow it oh i don't know <laughs> who knows yes <laughs> who knows with who knows with that but yeah i think for innovating ideas all of the concept cars are going to be like here is this car you face each other and things like that or you can spin and you've got your tray or i don't know but, yeah see yeah. The, the, i i love the idea of self-driving cars on the safety side because people will always forget one thing once you nail it you can also nail the idea of other cars talking to other cars to make sure rather than just constant camera telemetry analysis and that's what it needs to be yeah when every car is talking to the other car yep. We know if one's out of control, if one's got a swerve, or like, that's when yeah. we stop losing people in automobile accidents. Yeah. But people love control. Yeah. <laughs> they love their cars. You talked about earlier in the broadcast. It's a, it's a thing yeah. that we would be taking away from a generation of growing up kids. I mean, I think, um, yeah, there will there'll, there'll always be a place for <clears throat> like the cars. But I think it's going to be cars that we've got now. Like I feel like, yeah, I don't... There's... I don't know. The electric cars just don't do it for me. No, I, I know. I, mean, I, I, I own an electric car. Yeah. I've seen yeah. it charge all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fine. It's great. It gets me from A to B. For a daily driver, it's absolutely fine. But it's yeah. boring as hell. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I want to I step back five years for the cars. You know, I want the last, the loud exhaust, the, the obnoxious, the neighbour hates me and stuff like that. What about that. just a speaker? No. <laughs> uh, when I was at Autosport, they had one fitted to a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to make it sound like I was like, oh, I mean, yeah, it sounded all right, but yeah, uh, no, it's just not work. Anyway, yeah, well, we digressed a little bit away from sim racing, but um, the my other point was as well, and I know you probably spoke about it on a previous um, Late Apex um, show for um, GT, where again, so many people involved in it um, was the film as well. I think the film was, I mean, I haven't watched the film, I haven't watched it yet, I need to, uh, yeah, for, yeah, just because I just didn't want to go to cinema. Um, to watch it, but when it comes out on Same. some some streaming service, whichever one it is, it's gonna Same. gonna launch it. Um, then I will, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. Um, I've then. heard good things. I've uh, yeah, but I I feel like it's um from like say everything that I've heard, you said it was very very good. But actually, it can you know, there's such a, a following of Gran Turismo that they've been able to produce yeah. that film, and it's based on true events. And yeah, you know, Jan did you know an amazing amazing thing. Like you know, he was just. Kid in a bedroom, right? Yeah, you know? like we get we we get grief as sim racers, like yeah, you just kids in bedroom, you know. But um, I'm in a sim studio, actually. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, a bedroom, though. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? He's he's gone from that to to yeah. professional driver, and I think mm -hmm. actually a lot of people now, and maybe the film will help a bit more and more progression with sim racing in general. People were like, okay, yeah, you're a world class sim. Sim racer, I I appreciate that you'll probably better get in a car and beat me, unless I'm a world, you know, unless they're actually a real life driver themselves, you know. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. No, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting this crossover. 
it's a, obviously it's always been a big focus on focusing on the crossover. Um, but yeah, it's exciting to see where it goes. Okay, what do we got next? So uh, this is exciting. The uh, Formula Ford, um, iRacing have got a uh, special series they're launching. Uh, let me read the note because otherwise I'm going to absolutely murder it. It replicates the British Racing and Sport Car Club, uh, the iRacing FF 1600 festival held at, um, in October every year. Um, this unique ev uh, event um, is that after the qualification, the drivers are divided into elimination series or heats, followed by a last chance race to determine who and in what position start the grand final of the event. Uh, 1,024 person servers, so you get six rounds uh, instead of a 1656 person server. So it's, uh, let me open some more some notes, but it's very exciting. It's based on an IRO event. Um, and the Formula Ford is a lot of fun. I'm terrible in it, absolutely terrible in it. But it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I can share the logo on screen so people know what I'm talking about. It is this, the iRacing FF 1600 Festival. Um, and I say it mirrors a, uh, an event in IRL that happens every October. Um, it was a bit of a surprise, let me see. Is that like um, I might be wrong? Is that like the Walter Hayes and stuff like that? They do uh, they do the f yeah the Formula Ford Festival, which is Brands Hatch. It is Brands, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they do Brands Hatch, and then they like the week later they're in Silverstone for like the Walter Hayes Championship. Like there's there's two back to back events. Oh, nice. The only reason I remember that is just because um, obviously former Apex Racing team driver Graham Carroll. He's, oh yeah, he was a Formula Ford British champion. Um, oh okay. Uh, and yeah, he we yeah we basically went to the Formula Ford festival and the Walter Hayes with him, and he won the Walter Hayes. Oh wow. Um. So yeah, so yeah, just another example of a you know really good sim racer being able to <laughs> to win. Real yeah, life, it uh, says for over fifty years, this event has produced races, excitement, memories, and champions like no other. Um. Honor roll names Eddie Irvine, Mark Webber, Jensen Button, to name a few. I was hoping it named more. Um, I mean, when I was there, there was like big speed, like um, Jackie Stewart was there saying how much he'd been following it over the years and things like that. And yeah, so it'd yeah, be quite cool if, um, yeah, for us to kind of mirror that and get involved. They, they don't televise that event very well, like the real life one, um, which is a bit of a shame because it'd be nice to sort of see Iris and do a proper link up with the, the real one. Yeah, for um, sure. And even, you know, just to take it another step further, it'd be great, like, if this gains some traction in a few years, that actually there's a whole bunch of Sims at the actual um, Formula Ford Festival. That'd be um, fantastic. Yeah, like, come on, let's make that, that happen. That's so did cool. you see, I think it was Formula E that tried this idea. While the real race was going on, you could be in a Sim on at track racing them. It would use... to in their in-car telemetry to yep. put them where they are in their position and their speed, and you would be racing. Obviously, you can't drive into them, but you would be racing to see what your pace and everything. I think that, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, that sounds like fun. I mean... I mean, you'd be a lap down after two laps, but it'd be well, fun. Well, no, not even thinking <laughs> that. I'm thinking beyond the obvious of them trying to get the physics right so that the lap times are the same, because uh, <laughs> either we are, we smoke them or they smoke us. I don't, I, I've never seen it being quite accurate, so... But, yeah. No, that this will this will be good. This, like I say, this is a good event in real life. I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, Dville likes that. Yeah, yeah I would, yeah. I would love Pretty that. Smart. Lots of Sims, like you say. Um, that would be really good. Yeah, I'm gonna look out for that event. I've drove the car. I mean, actually, it was popular at one point. Max Verstappen was was obviously a downtime of F1, and this car had just been released, and he was he was doing official and unofficial and unofficial, and it brought hundreds and thousands, hundreds, thousands of people to the series, and people were streaming it, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, DVO, you mentioned some stuff about the film that we, we didn't pick up on chat there as well. So, yeah, no, that's an interesting bit of feedback there about, obviously, yeah, some some when they obviously had some decent track footage and things like that, it was it was kind of good. Yeah, because I think it's... a little it's, bit hard to follow along. I think it's all filmed at one F1 circuit, but they use tricks of the camera to... Did, didn't I hear that they had, like, only... There was, there was some bit... 
think they do some stuff on the Norse life, but they only had like tiny little section, and they had to <laughs> they had to turn around and come back and, just, <laughs> and do like they had this tiny little bit that they hired, and that was it. I don't know. So, I, I know they yeah. had access to one of the F1 weekends. Um, so yeah, I think it was all filmed, like you say, on limited footage. So yeah, I think Deville's point is like to a trained eye, we're going to spot all of the yeah, yeah. fakery. It's like, wait, that's not Hockenheim. Wait, that's not Silverstone. I mean, that's like <laughs> the other film that we talked about earlier on, which was you know Days of Thunder to, for a, yeah. for a NASCAR fan. They ripped that film to to shreds, but you know, for a, uh-huh. an F one fan like us, we're like, yeah, fine, it's all right, it's all good. <laughs> but, yeah. No. Um, I think actually doing iRacing gave me some appreciation to the tracks. I was like, that's not right. That's not the right track. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, you're right. I think there's definitely going to be some of us ripping ripping that to bits. There you go. Le Mans was filmed in Hung. Yeah, there you go. Hungary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they do a lot of that, addressing the tracks. Yeah, you know, you're like, no, nope, that's not right. So, yeah. yeah. All right, up next, we were actually talking about this earlier, Race Room, um, which it's been quiet. For a long time. I haven't heard the name being brought up in a very long time. But they have committed to a new tyre model, a physics update, and a new circuit. Now, we were talking about this circuit before uh, the broadcast, and we've neither of us have heard it. It's in the south of France, and it's called, sorry for any French people, Circuit de Pauville uh, Grand Prix. Uh, I believe it's a touring car focused i don't know it's going to be used in the touring car dlc pack so for me to assume it's a t- t- touring car track is Makes just sense. is just yeah quoting the obvious um but yes i mean i liked i've always liked the race room concept it being free actually free free you don't pay anything you don't need to pay a subscription and then you can go race some tracks have some fun do some ai um but that's as much as i ever did with it because I then went back then I went straight to AC and R Factor Two, and I never went back. So I um, great new circuits stuff like that. I'm gonna have to be pretty short with um, race room. I'm afraid I I was I did my PlayStation stuff. I went to iRacing. And obviously, people talked about race room. I was ah oh, okay fine. I'll try it. Went to it. Looked to it. Um, yeah, I think I got as far as downloading it. Couldn't really do anything more with it. Like I just. Like actually getting started, the user experience, I think it's pants. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was... They need to sort that out. I mean, it might have changed. It was a fair few years ago and stuff like that. So apologies to all your race room fans out there. Like, they're probably giving me a hard time. Yeah, they're um, coming. <laughs> uh, listening to it back. But like, I, I, I wanted to give it a bash. Yeah. And I couldn't figure it out. And I'd figured I racing out. And that's useless as well. It is, yeah. No, I, mean, I agree. But that I could figure out. But yeah, race room, I just, I just, I just didn't know what the heck I was doing. Hell, I remember the old R Factor 2 UI. You needed a degree in computer science just to turn on force feedback. It was a there were menus upon menus upon menus. Yeah. I actually jumped hurt I I hurt my arm the first time in R Factor 2. Felt the force feedback. I was like, fine. Went out of pit road, and you know you like you have to drive yourself to the track in R Factor 2. I bumped a wall and I must have got the full force of my wheel instantly. Yeah. Oh, not good. No, not good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know much about race room either. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, I like the idea that they've, you know, it's free to play initially. You've got your, you've got your base content and stuff like that. And you can just get in and have a go. And we were talking off air earlier on, saying, you know, actually, I think, I think it's time that I racing did the MX Five series, and yeah, the, and the two circuits, and just gone right, free to play. Let's get them in there. Yeah, because we want people on yeah, the sim to get. It should be free. And then subscriptions when you want to maybe commit out of rookies or something. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, make yeah. rookies for yeah. free. I mean, I'm not even thinking rookies. I'm thinking just MX5. The one car, two tracks. Yeah, okay. You know. What's like, the two tracks? Lime Rock and... Okiyama. Okiyama. Good choices. That's yeah, yeah. means a lot to me because when I first got iRacing, I was learning those two. I mean, me, I'm sure my age as well, right? <laughs> That's all, that, that is what rookies was back in the day. Yeah, Lime Rock and Okiyama. I think maybe occasionally they give you Okiyama long. But it was mostly a Kiyama short, oh and it just went back, back, and back and forth, back and forth. That was that was what I had to deal with for uh, eight weeks or something like that. Just those two. Yeah. Well, I don't miss uh, the rookie days. When I remember, I, <laughs> I, um, t- I know we're talking about race room, but now I switched to iRacing, racing. So yeah. Fun. So, Fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember, like, I joined straight as after they changed it because just before I joined, you had to do twelve weeks before you could get promoted. There was no fast track. Wow. Oh, the, the fast track. There's no fast track, so you couldn't get out of rookie straight away. Because even if your safety was maxed out, you'd have to wait for end-of-season promotion. Yep. 
Ah, I don't understand the fast track. No. I don't like it because you can just whip out your credit card and time trials and you can be anything you want yeah, true. if you're willing to grind and yeah, buy, the, buy the cars you need and grind the tracks. All right, on a completely different subject, this this one feels weird saying, but I was actually talking to uh, Lewis before the broadcast about this one. He quite liked the idea. Uh, let me bring it up on screen. No, there isn't. No, there's nothing to show. A mobile app for your Thrustmaster. So... You may be asking what on earth I'm talking about. I do just mean for settings, i.e. your wheel range, your dampening settings, your torque settings on a mobile. Everything's got to be smart these days, isn't it? <laughs> drives me. It does drive me. It does drive me crazy that I have an app for everything. I have folders of called whatever junk nine, and it's got some shop I used five years ago, and oh. it is getting annoying. Do you know, I looked up a smart for a smart kettle the other day. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just, uh, just go and flip the button. <laughs> like it's not that difficult. But I was like, no, no, I want it. I, look, I, I get up in the morning every morning, right? Make me and my missus a cup of coffee, and um, it'd be yeah. nice if it was warm and wet. Exactly. I want it boiled for when I get wouldn't, up. I get up at that same time. Wouldn't so a smart like, kettle fill itself with water though? Well, this is that would be the true. Yes. That would be the true thing. So there was nothing like that. So I looked at like a big sort of uh, kettle, um, massive sort of jug thing. Yeah. Um, for it, but yeah, but in the end, I was just like, no, it's just, it's like, I can't be, I can't be dealing with another app on my phone. So would I, would I have an app on my, um, on my phone uh, for, for a will? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think if, if your wheel is tied to you, mm -hmm. so wherever you plug it in, whether it be at home, you take it to a friend's house or something like that, um, and it can do that, or uh, I think actually even better if your friend has a Thrustmaster, you've got a Thrustmaster, yeah, and okay. you go over there and go, Scan this QR code for that. Bang. Apply my settings. Yeah, Boom. okay. That's and it good. just puts your profile and things like that. Or even, like yeah, sharing over iMessage or sharing over email. Like, you can just... That would... I feel like that makes some, some sense to do it. But if you're just going to tweak it on your own PC, then I think... Meh. Yeah, no. I am I am one to agree. I don't need an app for everything. Like, the whole smart home rage. I, I was on band. I, I was on board right at the launch of all this smart home stuff. But the problem is... You ended up with thirty apps: one for your light bulb, one for yeah. your uh, one strip, loose strip. It became annoying. Yeah. Um, but it's something Thrustmaster are doing. Um, it's compatible with a whole host of their bases. I'm assuming it works via Bluetooth or yeah, LAN. It says like for a like LAN thing, so it just it gets on the network somehow. So yeah, maybe it's got a little Wi-Fi chip in there or something like that. I mean, I that's just reading that that's a perfectly good feature right if you're in a like a sim center and you've got 20 of them and you want all yeah. the profile settings that you can just push it out to it like that's yeah 100 i mean yeah um mr peter um from vrs i would like to be able to push um the vrs settings from one pc to all of our sims please at the same time and make them the same yeah uh, okay like a mass cloud distribution yeah he's probably so sat there thinking not many people have a sim center yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is just for you. Yeah, well, just do it for me. I don't care. That's, this is what I want. Yeah, How I many want... people are going to read this up? Like, wow, I can sink all nine of my rigs. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah, see? That, that, is, that is a must-have feature. Come on. Let's, <laughs> let's face it. But yes, I'd like that. I'd like okay. to be able to push it for <laughs> We'll speak God, to him. God damn it, David. What do you have to do with my point? <laughs> I could have had some, made some of my life easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I Can like everybody it. just buy two two wheels, please? Yes. Um, Easy. Yeah. Um, okay, on the subject of wheels. This one's quite... I, so the, when people ask, I get asked a lot about wheels and what I would like, and I always find there's this... People always ask, with screen or without? I, I like the screen. It looks cool. If you stood back from your rig and you're going to take a photo of your rig, it looks epic to have a screen. Do I use the screen while driving? No, it's too low. Yeah. I, I've tried everything. I agree. I really have tried everything. Maybe a DDU, a DDU is fine, but a, a wheel, a, the screen on the wheel, it's it's not just too low. It's too close to you as well. Like your f eyes have to refocus and then focus back, so it's yeah. not saying good. So GSI are releasing. Oh, sorry. My point on that is, I've always said I wish there was a middle ground. Why 
do the R the RPM lights have to only be on a version with a screen? You see the screen and the RPM lights, and the version with no screen has no RPM lights. I assume it's the cost of all the if you put in the electronic motherboards and anything like that in, you you might as well put you can a just add to it. Yeah, yeah, add a screen. Uh, but what we've got here, I, uh, rem I remember um, Bodner did just the light module way back in the day. Right. Yeah. 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 So we the, used the to actual be strip. Yeah, we used to be partnered with um, with um, Leo Bodner, and I remember they so they sent us kind of those and they just used to have them as a separate bit and they could be added into anything like like little yeah, yeah. little um dash or a wheel or anything like that so they do make the components separately yeah um, so this is the but yeah I, I i like this idea i think i think that's the it's, and it's not just the rpm it's the the button the a b the, uh, the abs i think there's the, the braking is it oh sure the sides yeah abs and tc sort of the flashlights the yeah, purple I, I, the... I, again because that you can you can deal with that for peripheral vision right yep. like you can you understand what's going on no one ever looks at the like oh shift do you know what I mean? it's not like that yeah 100 um, percent yeah, so you, you you can see the lock up things on the wheel. I think I think that would be um, I think that'd be good. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's, a, that's yeah, my interest comes. Looks looks nice. Yeah, you obviously you got the programmable coloured buttons. Um, there, it's got enough shifters. I don't, I don't, I'm not bought on the. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see it's got. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was looking at your screen. Oh yeah, of course. Like, yeah. looks a bit Transformers at the back. It does yeah. Um, we don't know price it yet. Um. And it's available for pre-order soon, I think. I don't know. Um, but I like it. It looks good. It does look good, actually. It depends on the price because wheels are getting pretty expensive. But I expect it to be, to be honest, around this 899. That's my guess. Sort of 899, 850 region. Um, but I am just guessing. But yeah, that's the Hyper SL from GSI. Um, What's the... You talk about price. What's this? Is this a different um, one? That's the one with the screen. What they're oh, saying that's is, the one with the screen. Yeah. but I'm assuming the problem is the screen's probably quite cheap, and all the electronics that have gone in to make the ABS, TC, and RPM lights, they're all still in there. Like yeah. this might be the reason we don't see it because when the price comes out and it's like, well, it's eleven fifty. Yeah. Like, wait, why is it so close? Well, because all we did was take out an eighty quid screen. Like, what do you want us to do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't like the cutout in the shifters rather than being solid. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, from the back. Yeah, I, now, I get what they're saying. Yeah, me and Alex were actually talking about pedals today on the how they want to match IRL, and they always have these what I call cheese grate holes. Yep. Um, so yeah, yeah. you don't need them. They can just be smooth. And let's face it, right, with those cutouts there, I mean, uh, most sim racers have got some sort of gloves now, right? Like, let's be honest, we go through our gloves just oh. because of the shifters. Like, Yeah, the carbon fibre. If, if they are not, like... Smoothed, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's the set of gloves every six months. You know, and those things aren't cheap as well. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But yeah, no nice looking wheel. Uh, we got a lot of wheels uh, hitting the market though recently. I yep. have to admit. Yeah. I mean, in general, I think hardware right, the market's starting to get a bit saturated. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, and so. everyone's on the same theme, matching IRL. Or I, I do want to see this pursuit we're seeing with DDs with wheels. DDs was always about more power, more strength, more fidelity. But now we're seeing the drive for cheaper and still trying to chase that efficiency, bring it down to like the 499. I mean, the Leo Bodden used to be 4,900. Mm -hmm. um, we're not seeing that with wheels yet. We're seeing people like, wait, this is 700. No, this is 900, 1,300. I mean, there's them replica RSR wheels that I want, but it's like 2,300 pounds. Yeah, this is crazy. I want to see the pursuit for... This is a, you know, the features. I don't know. I don't know what it, what we need to bring down. But I want to see the price come down. Is yeah. what I mean. Bundle bundle more features. Just yeah. So. Uh, all of some races getting saturated. Look at all the new games coming next year. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of GT. We're seeing a lot of uh, mirroring IRL. Um, yeah, we'll see. Competition is on the rise, though. We're seeing like iRacing's had its run of pure online competition dominance for. For a very long time. Yeah, long, as long as I can remember. Yeah, and we're not all hoping iRacing falls. We're hoping iRacing's pushed so that they have to up their game. They yeah. have to... Because uh, they're not at the moment. They just sit there and they do their thing. Yeah. Um, no one's bringing anything new, so they don't need to... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, you know, competition drives, you know, improvements. 100%. So, yeah. And the cream always rises to the top. Someone needs to tell me. Right, up in next, Husinveld. Hus Hus Husinveld. 
uh, both the sprints and their handbrake are getting a black edition. Now, <laughs> I'm going to let you in chat picture what I'm talking about when I say black edition, because you're picturing the same thing I did, like this giga black carbon fiber brushed pedals and the handbrake. Well, you'd be wrong. Let me show you. And this isn't a dig at Husenveld. They're a good company. I used their stuff for a very long time, but I'm going to show you what I mean. And you're probably going to think I've loaded the wrong web page when I load it. Here we go. This is the Husenveld Black. Okay, so not as black as you probably thought. Because they are, you can't see the mouse, but we're talking about the, what do you want to call it? The accessory part, the, the armatures. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. It's not the faces and the bases, which is kind of what I was hoping. I think that would look quite cool. Um, but it's a, what's the phrase? A brushed black, a powder? What's the phrase? Powder coating, right? Powder coating, black yes. Powder coating. Um, and yeah, and it's on their sprints and on the handbrake. The handbrake does look pretty good. I did make the mistake of clicking on it earlier and see it was almost like almost 400 quid, which I now realized I don't need a handbrake. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is going to be added to their permanent part of their lineup. Um, this isn't just going to be a uh, one-off sale. So I think you can now, from going forward, purchase the black or the standard silver. Uh, I think the one point they did make is obviously they where they've been making a lot of updates in all the smart control and like all the tweaks. The black edition does come with all this preloaded, so yeah, uh, it's almost like their statement of that these pedals are still around because their sprints are super pop. I mean, back in the day, I remember when these were almost peak, like these were, I mean, this was pre VRS pre like, I mean, I, uh, the pedals I had before my VRS were, were HEs. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, that's, that was the go-to pedal, right? They yeah. were, they were the best, um, you know, and they still are one of the best, you know, it's, I think again, everybody has, um, come up to their level, or a lot of pedal play, uh, yes. providers now have come up to their to their level, um, and and this is a perfect example of competition drives innovation because they come up with all the software for the ramp, the pedal ramping, and yeah. things like that when the sprints come out. Like they wouldn't have bothered doing any of that if there was no competition. Hundred percent, and, and they did they did that, and and yeah, that that's that's amazing, and I think more pedal people need to do that kind of into that level of detail with their pedals. That's just not enough that, that do that. Yeah. But of course that drove innovation. hundred percent. Their and software you know, was so easy to use. But you, you know just... where I'm going with this, with the 4k pedal, whatever it is, you know, the Simicube. Yeah. The, the direct drive pedals. That, that is H E drove the innovation to that pedal. Yeah. It's like, how do we improve on that you can't make it better with what it is and cheaper so you need to take it to the next level yeah and that's why they were like okay this is what we get they can't make it cheap at this point because it's so unique yeah 100 percent. and now what we're going to have is we're going to have other pedal providers try and do something similar to go right okay and i think you've already seen like people do little rumble things and yeah extra bits or hydraulic things you know they're yeah. all trying to find this middle ground <laughs> to yeah. where the super cube uh, pedals are because they're just um too expensive way um, too expensive you know so uh, but yeah no it's good um yeah even you know even though i'm sat here as a as a vrs partner you know yeah hg pedals yeah if you if you want a good set of pedals they look and and, and they look unique they, they do look different yeah i know you, you were like yes they should be all black and cool and i agree yeah, they should all, have been if it was all black it'd be cool but they still look cool yeah they do look cool but i think all black with say a silver h that would have ooh. yeah but wasn't yeah. my experience I, I scrolled up and down like wait this is the wrong they've opened the wrong page oh look we're talking about semi cube next of course man. it's all part of the plan or part of our brilliantly prepared <laughs> nice script little, nice little segue yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like a boss, this is why I should be here more often. Sorry, Sam. Correct. Get those likes in, please, people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, on the subject of Simicube, they have uh, published an update uh, with bigger updates, a bigger update pending. So I'm not sure what the bigger update is, but I have heard so many rumblings about a 360 hertz adaptive model for iRacing. I've, I'm not, this is not me quoting sources, and I didn't even write it. You remember IRFFB back in the day using telemetry to sort of upsample yep. 
uh, the force feedback in iRacing to try and simulate and what's the word? Uh, emulate 360. I think they're working on something similar that we baked into the direct drive uh, that will work seamlessly. Let's see. But the thing they focus on now, the thing that is happening now, is games, older titles where force feedback wasn't built in, but you want to play a non force feedback game. Back then, we used to have a wheels that. You remember, the more you pull them away from centre, the more they pulled back at you. Yeah. Um, they've developed like a centering spring force feedback setting that lets you dial it in to sort of help emulate those old titles and how they would have played rather than... I mean, there was no force feedback in those games. No. So the wheel just feels worse than a centering spring wheel. Um, so there's just a little something, a little quality of life feature and focusing on the games that aren't, you know, us sim racing elitist pc overlords we can sometimes forget that there are a million fun games driving games that you can play with all your equipment that don't require force feedback um so yes exciting times all right uh on the subject of everything apex i mean that's a, just to say that's the wrap of the news is pretty pretty slow week in terms of the sim racing it wasn't a bad week well i mean obviously yeah a bit of stuff there we filled that out nicely <laughs> <laughs> we always do. <laughs> it's almost like we like talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as uh, Sam would do, everything Apex now we're going to cover. Uh, so first up is Apex Racing Academy. I think the biggest news is that the Apex Racing Academy trials? That's what I've called it, the trials. Trials. Yeah. Sounds very Hunger Games, yeah. which is how you're also pegging it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Um, Obviously, thank you very much for mentioning that um, the Academy um, team signups were open on the last show. Uh, I think it was the last show or the show before. You certainly did mention it. I mean, we had 120 people apply for the yeah the the places. I mean, in the past, we'd only had six six spots. That's all we had available. So we've got to whittle it down. Um, I mean, this will be a bit of a scoop, I think, um, because um, I've made a decision that I want four drivers for GTP, four for Porsche Cup, Ooh. and four for GT3. So we're actually recruiting more this year than we have in the past. Um, yeah, I still want all the drivers to put laps in in all the cars. But yeah, so at the moment, you would have seen it all through the week if you had looked at a hosted session. There pretty much is guaranteed that there was three hosted sessions up at all times. Yep. Um, and lots of people sitting, um, sitting laps and things like that at the moment. So yeah, they've uh, essentially got to do ten lap, ten lap clean runs, um, a bit like the Neo pre qualifying. Right. Yeah. It's kind of the same. Ten thing. clean laps. Um, and if you start another one, you invalidate your old one, so it's gone. So yeah, that that's was, if that was your best time. Tough. You know, you you've got to you've got to go. You've got to grind until you get another good good you, run. You only can submit your last. 10 clean laps. Yeah. You go do a two-lap run and balk it. You can't be like, oh, yeah, go use my last one. You're yeah. like, no, um, no, mate. Not, I'm not, not Get back out that. there. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I, I will I will be quite honest. Like, we have, I, there is 120 people and we have put up, you know, probably 100 sessions this week. Um, yeah, I'm going from the very last one. I'm just going, right, what's your time? There we go. That's your time. I, I am not fishing through a hundred sessions to find yep. your fastest your yep. fastest time so it's your best so that that's kind of half of the the reason why we're doing that but yeah i'm excited to see um who we get i think we've got um yeah so the last session is sunday um so if you are watching this and you applied for the academy and you think hold on a minute i i, I don't know I, I sent like countless emails out like i must have sent about 10 15 emails this week just updating with different things so yeah please make sure you uh uh, are in these sessions with all the details and the passwords and stuff like that. And if you haven't got them, then you need to hit me up on email or DM and I'll give you the details. Ollie's in chat giving eyes. <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I've seen uh, some times from Ollie, so yeah, it should be good. Um, um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, they're well underway at the moment. And um, yeah, hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have, um, I'd have filtered it down a little bit to probably 20 or 30 people and then Interviews. That's the next stage. Oh God, lots of scoops. Yeah, yeah. Is interviews the final trial? Or do they have, no, to, ra so, do they have to race so, me? So we have we have interviews, um, and we make sure everybody's going to be able to do what they need to do, um, and then 
Um, after that, we actually put them in with some of our AART drivers to actually put them through their proper paces. Um, and we, um, we build setups with them um, for the final stage and see how they actually interact with everyone and get involved. You know, we want people to be, obviously a lot of people are scared about building sets and stuff like that, but we need people that are going to work together yeah. and um, and give feedback to how the car feels and what's better and be, you know, just just get stuck in, really. So Yeah, we're uh, testing all aspects. That's the yeah, whole point, right? To see, you know, we'll, we'll try and figure out people are going to be super quiet and not get involved or people are going to be... You know, um, too cheeky or cocky, may I say, and things like that, and maybe difficult to work with. You know, there's kind of a bit, there's a bit of everything, right? We, we we're trying to find a group of people that are going to be able to, you know, let me put together a boy band. A boy band, yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> lead, Although, we're looking for a lead singer. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I anyone can apply for this. You know, like say every, every everybody who applied, I've give a shot in the trials. Yeah, I've not rejected anybody at this point. Everyone has an opportunity. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um, oh, uh, opportunity moment to show our Fuji 8 promotion. There is a button here. Um, sh- d- 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 it's probably this one. Do them both. It don't matter. <laughs> not that one. Hey. <laughs> um, that one. We don't have a banner for it. It's a website. Okay, that's the Apex Racing League. We have the... Uh, well, that's the Porsche. The, the, it's up on screen, David. Let's do it, right? Yep. So the Porsche <laughs> Cup. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> so season nine of the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup League Series thing. Yep. <laughs> Championship. Mm-hmm. Masters. There we go. Masters, yeah. Um, is back. Its sign-ups are open now. Um, so head on over to the Apex Racing League website, as you can see on screen. For those that are listening back on podcast, that's apexracingleague.com. And, um, yeah, you can get yourself um, signed up and registered. I think about a third of the spots have gone already. It's only been open for, like, four or five days. So Excellent. places will go pretty quickly. Um, so, yeah, don't leave it too long, I think, if you, if you want to drive in that. Yeah, it usually follows the official series. So if you look at the um, the league website, you'll see that, the tracks have been announced, I think, first four or five rounds because that's all we know because it will run over into next season and we don't know the um, the lineup as of, as of yet. But, yeah, you wanted to talk about Fuji. Yeah, I'll share my screen. I'm not, I, I think there was a button, but I, th- I, 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 I missed the briefing, I must have. Uh, we have a Fuji promotion. Oh, obviously. We've still got the other, the other one up. Look, let's get rid of that one. There we go. There we go. Um, okay, so obviously we've got the Fuji 8-hour special event coming up. And the promotion we're doing here is a free Ferrari 296 GT3 setup and tips. And all you need to do is head on over to the website, the Apex Racing Academy website. Yeah, so Apex, you, well, you can actually see the link there in, um, in yep. David's uh, browser. But yeah, apexracingac.com and it's, what is it, Fuji 23? Fuji 23, yep. Yep. Uh, forward slash Fuji 23. Yeah, get yourself um, registered on there. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, up to three months free access to ARA for setups and everything. You get the free Ferrari 296 setup and some hand tailored tips from one of our uh, one of our pros on. Um, yeah, I believe it's Salva Talons. Yeah. Um, who just so. won the late, the very last BMW Sim Cup? So you know he knows his stuff. He's, he's pretty, all right. He's yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, he's all right. Um, yeah, so he's he's um, kind of working with that. And I know um, Sanchez, um, Alex Sanchez is helping build a lot of the um, Ferrari um, yeah uh, setups at the moment. So yeah, those guys um, going to be helping helping do that. So yeah, um, we won't. We will email you the setup after the final bop. So we should point that out. Is is not going to be a case of you sign up now and you just get the setup straight away. No, because we we don't know what changes are going to make and you know they leave the um, the changes quite late. So yeah, just um, keep a little eye out for that. Register that and we'll drop we'll we'll drop that email with the yep. with the promotional code and the um the, the setup and then the link to the tips and everything else like that there. So yeah. Uh, yeah excellent. Good. Oh we've got Marto in chat. Hello mate. Congratulations on the win today at the Apex Racing Prototype Championship season six, round six at Sebring. So who needs Sam? I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> um okay. 
Changing subject, Apex Racing Team. Uh, we might as well talk about ESRR1 first because it's, it's been happening. We've been here all day and it's been happening. Obviously, yesterday, all four drivers qualified for the semis. You must have been super proud. Yeah, super happy with that. Three podiums. Um, that's just what we what we need. I mean, you know, we're, we're obviously looking at the team's championship, trying to make sure that we get into that and stay in that top six position, which we're in right now. So we're kind of happy on, on, on that front. Um, yeah, get all the drivers locked in for um, the sort of the Sweden final uh, um, dream hack. Yeah, uh, that's that's kind of thing. Obviously, it's a it's a tough order uh, for Elvis, um, just because obviously he's coming into the season late. Um, yeah, obviously he was there for round one, but it's just obviously everybody else has got thousands of kilometers on him and stuff like that. So it was good to see him make back to back. It was a brilliant race, yeah. Semi finals, really good qualifying for him. Second time at Spa really shows that uh he's finding his his feet in the series a little bit. So yeah, let's let's see what we get when we're at the next round. Um which I I, I don't know where it is. Nope. No one does. No one does. Uh we got a chat message. Being pretty mean to Sam the whole time, gosh. Well he's the professional. He makes no mistakes. He he he's his etiquette is perfect. He remembers everything. I mean, we we both we both know we're basically we're we're, we're fired after this anyway. So <laughs> I will I will never be invited back on again. Um, yeah, David will because you know you you guys uh, guys love him. So <laughs> I'm not uh, sure about that. That's fine. Um, yeah. So all in all, it was a great uh, yesterday. Today, obviously, we had let's say today a couple right. of hours ago. Yeah, yeah. If that. Well, I. In between the ARL broadcast and this, I quickly go one and watch the last six laps of the final just to... Well, this is the thing. I, I, I We come out of here and I didn't realise that, yeah, poor Johan had, had an accident. We we were, we were had to step away like three laps before the end yeah. to do the broadcast. So, yeah, we just missed what, what happened there. But um, I, I said on the ESL broadcast that, you know, it's mixed emotions, I think, um, down there, obviously, like Kevin, extremely frustrated with um, the incident just, you know, and with himself being in, getting caught in that position that, you know, the accident um, happened. Yeah. Really wants to get, you know, finals and stuff like that. And we know he's capable of, of yep. winning, right? We've seen that. Um, good race from um, from Elvis. Like, we're really happy for that sort of a result for, for um, Elvis. So, yeah, we're good with that. And then uh, in the second semi, obviously, we're super frustrated for, for Jamie because... Let's like let's not beat around the bush, right? That was a rubbish incident from the RAG guys, yeah, and it just caused an absolute yeah, mess up in turn one. Put and in contention, yeah. through no fault of his own, Jamie finds himself losing two or three places, and they give they give the guy a three second slowdown, but his teammate's gone and and has gained places because of it. That's the thing. Both RAGs got a benefit on track for that. Um, yeah. And then also um, Kiki was able to get a, a run, or well, Yuri and Kiki were able to get a run on Jamie when he was sat behind them. Like, yeah, it, yeah. So he is not very happy. No, he did with, very frustrated with um, with that. But yeah, Johan obviously pleased to have got a good semi final result, good um, clutch of points again in the quarters and in the semis. The final didn't go no, um, according not. to plan. Not a very good qualifier, and um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, a um, bit unfortunate. But like I said, we scored good points this yep. week, um, so we're happy. So again, I think, um, you know, we're moving away from our rivals behind us and catching up the people, the teams um, in front. You know, we, th we, we feel like we've got a possibility to try and catch G2 if it's... You know, if at the minute like they're just running on Seb, like I'm sorry, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry to the rest of G two, um, just sort of saying it as it is, yeah, but you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Seb, it's, Seb's it's, got you all on his uh, <laughs> at his back. I mean, people were, were saying like you know Kevin had the whole team on his back at the start of the season, but now his teammates are delivering, yeah, uh, and it could quite happen for for these guys as well. But yeah, yeah, if as it stands right now, if Sebby slips up around, then like we'll we'll be we might be out of nippum. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're we're kind of hoping for, and yeah, if we can. Yeah, getting all four drivers through to semis is uh, promising for the future. Like promising for the future rounds. But there's only what two left. Yeah, yeah. 
it's going to be uh, feisty yeah, it's on the last one. Because the dream hack doesn't count towards the team championship. So uh, the, the, once these are done, that's the teams. Oh, I didn't know done. that. No, so we, the final doesn't doesn't count. I don't think. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so that's they'll be able to present the trophies to to the winners straight after that. So I think that I mean that team championship must be getting quite tasty. Like Williams didn't have a great day. I didn't know. Porsche did have a pretty good day. So yeah, must red be line had. Mixed, but they got they did get a good haul. Yeah, Ziggy and stuff did well. Yeah. Um, yes, um, Elias, 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 Elias. El- how would you say it? Yeah, that's how I'd say it. Elias, Elias. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry um, if it's wrong. You can, <laughs> you can kick me. Um, um, GT maybe. Masters champion winner. Yeah, so real life ADAC GT yep. Masters championship winner. So I was reading the report. It's the youngest ever duo to um to win that title so yeah wow. congrats um to him like we've had pretty pretty good year um actually for our real life drivers for us because obviously Adam Smalley yeah what a won the based yeah the Porsche. Porsche, Porsche GB basically yep um the IRL Porsche GB not the one you yeah, see yeah 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 exactly um he's a nice guy really nice guy yeah Adam re- really sound guy um yeah I, I mean I hope our sim helped him this year oh well, prob- he, yeah he, he puts did. it all down to probably it didn't yeah <laughs> I, I i chuckled um because we're gonna we're gonna talk about alex dunn um in a minute as well and of course he's a very new member to our team um so we can't sort of take any um credit or anything like that but obviously alex dunn um did really well finished runner-up in um gb um three gb3 so, yeah yeah so kind of basically formula three um the uk version yeah exactly um, I think um a bit disappointed in the last round because it was just safety cars all the time, so they didn't really get an opportunity to mm-hmm. actually race, um, which is the same. But, yeah, he did an F3 test at um, Imola and finished, like, P1. Uh, and the um, after, that was amazing. But he did, a, he did an interview, um, and the guy was like, um, so tell us a little bit, well, we, we, we've seen that you've signed for a sim racing team, and, uh, like, what kind of thing does that do? Is it? And, and, and Alex was just like, that is, there does, does nothing. Nothing at all. Like, it's totally separate. I just do different stuff on the sim. You know, <laughs> has no relevance to my real life. I was like, God damn it, Alex. <laughs> Contracts. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, yes, Abex. I mean, obviously, we don't help him at all. Let's <laughs> not beat around the bush. Um, but uh, do you know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd be I'd be interested to ask that. Because ask that, obviously, I've talked to a few real life guys like, um, like Ash Sutton. Used to swear by the Thursday night touring car league that he used to do. Like he's like that helps me because you lot are all such nutters. Like I know what to expect on a race day because yeah, you'll I mean, send it in to me. Or like I, does that stuff out? Like I know it doesn't make them faster, right? Because the physics aren't right. You know they're they're, they're good. They're not bad, but it's not going to make you faster. It's as simple as that. Yeah. No, yeah. you see it with F1 drivers. Their opinions are so swung. Max Verstappen and a few others are like, yeah, it's staying sharp, staying competitive. Not so much, like you say. That's, I think it's the mental stuff, isn't Whereas it? Yeah. Hamilton's like, no, that, why? Like, yeah. that has no yeah. relevance to my brain in the world yeah. of Formula One. Yeah. But being, yeah, I, I think, um, I always think back about the Verstappen thing where he did that practice session with Kirkhoff. Like, I don't know if you saw it with the move. Was it around the outside of Blanchemont, or I don't, think that's I don't know, or he kind of got got this run around Blanchemont, and I'm sure he went around the outside of Blanchemont, and then he did it in real life. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, it's only because he's sim racing. It's an like, racing move. <laughs> sim racing does it. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. 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 Max, I know you're watching. Come on. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell by the views. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us, was it was it because you'd done that move on Kirkhoff? You're like, look, if I can do Kirkhoff round this corner, I can do this as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I yeah, know. I find it all very exciting. The crossover. It's we still got a lot of evolution to decide where where the crossovers are and everything. But it's exciting. Um, British F4. I wish I could watch more of it. I catch up as much as I can. But I believe. Pete and Luke both won. Yeah, so Pete, um, pole position, third pole um, yeah, in a row. Um, so, yeah, really good. I always chuckle about his um, Instagram post. All drivers are the bloody same. So I was like, mm, it's a bit scruffy lap. But I've got pole. Here it is. <laughs> it, like, there's no mistake. He, he counter steers once for like a microsecond out of turn one. Oh, where's your mistake? You hit every apex. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, so a really nice lap for Pete. 
got himself pole position. And um, yeah, uh, he um, didn't really wasn't really challenged in the in the race. To be fair, um, it's, a, it's a tricky one because obviously a lot of slipstream yeah. in that car. So you know, people can be three, four tenths off pace and still have a run at you. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you can you can do that. Um, yeah, and then um, Luke was. Fifth, I think. I think he got some damage. There was like a check up in the. I think I remember seeing yeah, the clip. Yeah. And, and I think got wing damage, and that like, he dropped down to to fifth. But then we got the reverse grid pole. Easy. I was like, <laughs> it's like it was planned. And then yeah, he just he again he I mean he had um he had a bit of fight with Matt Caruana, I think it was. Oh okay, he's, so a he's driver. Yeah, um, Matt was an academy driver. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, yeah. So he he was one of the first ones we did for um, like the whole trial trial thing. Um, I think he he basically pulled himself out of it after a a little while because he just didn't have the time to commit to it. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so last season when he did a four, he was actually a, a, an academy driver. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and um, unfortunately, a bit of net code between them on the outside of the last corner. Ah. Um, just sent just sent Matt and. Yeah. Um but yeah, so Luke Luke won that and Pete was fourth or something like that. So yeah, good points. So the Storm Force gaming Storm Force gaming ALT team team, team is is doing uh it's doing a gig delivery. Yep. It's gig delivery. I want it. Yeah. Apparently yeah. I'm not allowed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I think um it looks better on the IRO one car, which not got any notes on here, but obviously that series oh, um should I? Um was on as well. I mean, I, there's not really much to talk about. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think, um, yeah, I think a few car, a few guys got crashed out and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's crazy racing. It, it's like the F4 on heat, essentially. <laughs> it's the same slipstream, like nuts livery. Nuts, yeah, it is a, it is a nuts livery. Um, it looks really good. Um, but nuts slipstream. Um, it was Tires at, go off. It was at Fuji. I mean, like that, that amount of slipstream on... You know the I mean? longest straight in oh, the yeah. world. It's just, it's just insane. So, um, yeah, it's been a bit of a. How was yeah. the results of Fuji? Do we, was there any big finishings from our team? No, it's pants. Pants. Yep. You heard it here first. Yeah. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we mentioned again, but let's mention again. Signups are open for the ARA Porsche Cup League. I can't not say a word on the end. I've tried. We try one time. Signups are open for the ARA Porsche Cup League, League on <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is it Apex Racing League you go to sign up? Yeah, Apex Racing League website. Um, um, yeah, 10 rounds, um, elimination heats, um, follows the officials. Yeah, 27 slots taken in the first three days. So actually, that's nearly closer to 50%. I've been saying 33% all, all day. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, actually, we're closer to 50%. So yeah. Um, there is the announcement page there. Maybe we can share that on screen just for a quick second. Yep. Okay. So this is season nine. Wow. Uh, just loading it now. There we go. Uh, the Apex Racing Porsche Cup season. See? S season. There's always a word after it. Uh, season nine. Yeah, but there's always something after it. You can't just end with cup. We explain this. Um, season nine, 60 drivers taken on 10 tracks in our longest calendar yet. Return to our format of the season seven. Uh, the championship features our elimination heat form addition to extended hour-long races. Whoa. Hour-long. In this car, tyres are going to melt. That makes it such a challenge. I was going to say, that makes it a bit different. Yeah. Um, let's look at the calendar. Watkins Glen, good. The Nordschleife, how long is that one for? Is that an hour? That would be tense. How yeah, I many laps are going to be? Four? Five? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Imola, Road Atlanta. And then, obviously, to be confirmed, because we don't know what Iris are doing for the uh, official series. Good point. Oh, of course. Of course, of course. Yep, so if you want to get signed up, make sure you get to the website and sign up. How do I get the cameras back? There we go. Um, the one thing... Oh, yes, I do want to mention. I mustn't forget to mention. Let's talk about everything coming up on Apex Racing TV that you don't want to miss. We have upcoming... Um, sorry, let's get this right and not mess up. What's the date today? 27th. 27th. So in two days, we've got the FF Weekend Warriors. That's the Formula Ford. Uh, I don't drive it much, but it's a blimmin' fun car. The SFF Weekend Warriors, which is the 
Radical? Is it SRF Radical? Um, that's not the Spec Racer Ford. Oh, yeah. It looks like a Radical. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Is that have the Mazda dash now, I believe, if you look at yes. it? Yeah. Yes, I think it does, yeah. Um, sorry, do you have something to say on that? Sorry. Uh, no, just obviously it's something that I've obviously commentated on in the past. And yeah, I remember that when you said the Weekend Warrior, I was like, uh, is that not the Spec Ford Racer? So that's how I knew it was <coughs> when you were like, yeah, struggling with what car it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the Rick Motec World Challenge Round 5 at the Glen. I believe that's GT3s. Uh, the Ray Esports Racing League at Road Atlanta, and this one looks super fun. I um, the ARA Super Formula uh, that that season's looked good so far. Sam's been telling me about it. The car is just I lo- I would like to drive this car, but I just haven't got the time to. Uh, what's the phrase? Get good. Yeah, I mean Lee said I should have a yep. I should have a, a dip and a dabble. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a very I'll, high down. I'll go, like I said, I haven't I haven't had a play. Yeah, all good, all good leagues there. To be fair, like the um, the weekend warrior stuff, they're they're a lot of fun. Like the obviously, I haven't looked at the Formula Ford stuff that they've been doing on it, but the Spec Ford Racer, like they have some of the best racers in those um, series um, in that league. It's one of the better run leagues. To be fair, um, always really good racing, really good fun. Like yeah, if you fancy something a little bit different, um, yeah, have a have a well, a you're the go. You're the and world class pro. The Rick Matek series as well. Like um my my mate Kevin Ford puts that on. Um that's been going on for absolutely I ages. recognize the name, yeah. Um yeah, if you if that's the kind of time slot that you want, so that that sort of more American time zone. It's like two or three in the morning for us. I'm not like commentating that. that. I, I used to. <laughs> I'm I used not to commentate on that. It don't was, even ask. Oh, it was tough. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a great series. I I remember commentating with um, with a couple of guys. Um, yeah, I can't remember what happened, um, but all I know is I um, I, I was struggling to stay awake, and um, yeah, I, I didn't think that I disappeared for very long at, at all. But I guess I disappeared for about five, ten minutes or something like that. Because suddenly, like, oh, Alex is awake again. Because <laughs> I just started commentating. And they're like, yeah, you went for like five minutes. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, we, we, we've been talking to you, but you have not been replying. <laughs> so, yeah, I obviously fell asleep and then come back. was like, oh, no, 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 no. So, yeah, sorry, Kevin. <laughs> but actually, again, one of the best run leagues that you'll ever be in. If you're into that that sort of time zone, go, go check them out. Um, yeah. Extreme motorsports. Um, yeah, good. All right, I think that's pretty much it. One thing I must, otherwise Lee's going to be on my back. I, I mustn't forget this. Um, code late Apex, Apex Racing C gets you up to three months off of the Apex Race Academy services, say um, the setups and everything. I used to use before joining, um, but now it's all yeah. covered. Um, hey, Dig, in chat, does look fun, super formal. Like, yes, I saw you drive it. Uh, Teague looked like me driving it, though, for the first time. Lots of spin in at Suzuka. Actually, I remembered him testing it. I made him test Suzuka because then I didn't want to look bad. If he spins, then uh, he's just mortal like me. Oh, well, there you go. Um, I think that's everything. Unless you've got any questions from chat or anything you wanted to discuss that yeah, I've missed. I mean, I, I maybe only will add um, one little point as well for anyone who fancies doing the Fuji um, eight hours from Apex Racing Simse Center. Um, it, yeah, you know, this is um, perhaps something that we don't advertise enough. That True. We've got eight sims downstairs. Like, you know, if you and a couple of mates want to come down and do it from here and have a bit of fun and use it as a kind of like a meet-up location and stuff like that, Sounds we're awesome, starting yeah. to, to do that. I think, um, I think in the future we might try and put on, like, some sort of casual community events. Not like the open day, because that's, like, crazy for us to organise and stuff like that, but actually where we invite some teams down and do that and you can use our spotting machines upstairs and stuff like that and we have like four or five things and we do some um do some bits and just have a bit of fun with it um, yeah i've been telling my the mate i drive with who's in the netherlands all the time i drive with i was like mate one time just come over and we'll do yeah. it from here yeah It'd be awesome yeah i mean like the, the vco events that we did the 24 hours like that was just like that was just us having shits and giggles right it was amazing you know and and, and that's what I'm sort of saying to some of these guys, like, yeah, if there's three or four of you, come and do it. You can hire two rigs. They'll be yours for the whole time. You can have them set up how you want and put your programs on them. Like, we don't care too much. Like, you know, yeah. um, 
as long as we, you know, that was epic, it and start afterwards, and yeah, you you guys can can do that, and you can actually be together and in, enjoy the whole whole event, and yeah, we can give you a little spotting station upstairs that you can bring your laptop. It's like a docking station you can just plug in. It's got three screens, and you know you can have your get on comms and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. just I've just I've just remembered I've got an endurance race at eight in the morning. I'm gonna be wide awake <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> It's half past eleven. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And we haven't even locked up yet. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Wolfman. Yep. Hello. Um, but goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's everything. I think we've covered. Oh, it was a good week. Um, so yeah, make sure you're here next week. We'll be back for doing uh, the late apex. It's once a week here at this um, time. Um, not long after the. Yes, I know, Lisa. I'm going to need more than alarms. I'm going to need coffee. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's been fun, Alex. Thank you. It's been nice uh, hosting with you. Yeah, good. Thanks everybody for um, for following along. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the shows and the broadcast um, today. Like I said, we want we want to outdo Sam. Please, please hit that like button. Smack the like button there. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, right. I guess it's up to me. Is it? To <laughs> yes. <laughs> to, to turn it off. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Let's. Um, yeah. We'll bid you. Um, uh, yeah. Good night. And um, yeah, maybe you you'll see us again. Um, in the future if, uh, if Sam doesn't murder me but yeah on that note ciao ciao maybe <laughs> <laughs>